This segment of our course deals with the installation and removal of the two basic types of rigid couplings, the split sleeve and the flange. Since the sleeve is generally considered the easier of the two, we'll look at it first. As with any job, you must first assemble the required tools, equipment, and supplies. Then put on the safety equipment as required by your plant. In most cases, you will be given the coupling that is required for the particular application, and all you must do is install it. However, you should always double-check to be sure that the couplings will fit correctly. To do this, measure the outside diameter of the coupling fit on the shaft with an outside micrometer. Then measure the inside diameter of the coupling. The coupling bore should be slightly smaller than the OD of the shaft. Since these measurements may vary somewhat, it will be best to check the specifications or requirements for the installation you are working with. There are many cases where it is necessary to bore the coupling halves to blueprint specifications. Your next step will be to measure the keyway width and depth in the shaft and in the coupling. Once you have obtained these measurements, you should secure the appropriate size key. Now try the key in the keyway of the coupling hub and in the shaft. The key should have a close fit in the keyway without binding. Now install the key in the shaft keyway. Measure from the top of the key to the bottom of the shaft with an outside micrometer. Then measure from the bottom of the coupling bore to the top of the coupling keyway. Compare the measurements. The measurement you took here of the coupling bore and keyway should be two to six thousandths larger than this measurement of the shaft and key. This is to ensure some clearance between the key and the top of the keyway when the key is installed. Now dismantle the coupling like this. You can now see the positioning grooves on the inside of the sleeve coupling. Measure the width and depth of these grooves and compare these measurements to the measurements of the positioning ring that you will be using. Again, they should be a close fit, but should not bind. Check by inserting the ring into the positioning groove for your own satisfaction. Once you have determined that the coupling and associated parts are the right size, you are ready to align the two pieces of equipment. This alignment is very important and is a rather complicated procedure. For that reason, we will not go into the alignment in this module, other than to tell you that the alignment must be completed at this point. Once the shafts are aligned, you are ready to install the coupling. Place half of the coupling on the shafts, like this. The positioning rings on the shafts should be positioned in the grooves of the coupling half. The keys should also be installed, like this. Now install the other half of the coupling on the first half, again aligning the positioning rings. The final step is to tighten the bolts on the coupling securely, making sure that no misalignment occurs in the shafts. Although the procedure sounds rather complicated, it's not really that bad. The majority of your time is consumed in checking to be sure that all sizes and fits are right.
Removal of the sleeve coupling is very simple. Loosen the bolts from the coupling halves and remove one of the coupling halves from the shafts. Then measure the distance between the faces of the two shafts. Write the measurement down because it will be needed during installation. You would then remove the remaining coupling half from the shafts, and the removal is complete. That's basically all there is to the removal and installation of a rigid sleeve coupling. Now let's look at the installation of a rigid flange coupling. You'll soon see that many of the steps are identical to those of the sleeve coupling. First, secure the required coupling and take it apart. Now measure the outside diameter of the shaft with a micrometer. And the inside diameter of the coupling. The coupling may have to be bored out to meet specifications. If so, be sure that the coupling face and outside diameter are true to the bore. Compare the shaft and bore measurements you have against the specifications you must work with. The coupling to shaft fits will vary, so refer to the manufacturer's manual for specific instructions. In this case, the coupling bore is slightly smaller than the shaft OD, which means that we will have an interference fit. Next, Measure the keyway width and depth in the shaft. And in the coupling. Use these measurements to obtain the correct size key as you did with the sleeve coupling. Then retract the set screw in the coupling above the keyway. Try the key in the keyways of both the coupling and the shaft. The fit should be a close sliding fit, but it should not bind in the keyway. Now install the key in the shaft keyway. Measure from the top of the key to the bottom of the shaft. Then measure from the bottom of the coupling keyway to the top of the coupling bore. The coupling, bore, and keyway measurement should be between two and six thousandths of an inch larger than the shaft and key dimensions. This is the same procedure you went through for the sleeve coupling. Now that your measurements are complete, you are ready to install the couplings. Since the coupling bore is smaller than the outside diameter of the shaft, we will have to heat the coupling so it will expand enough to slide it over the shaft. The amount of heat to be applied can be calculated by referring to reference A in your workbook. This temperature will vary according to the amount of interference of the fit. Your instructor will explain the procedure for you. Check the temperature of the coupling hub during the heating with a pyrometer. Overheating could ruin the coupling. When it reaches the required temperature, slide it quickly onto the shaft using asbestos gloves to protect your hands. Remember, any hesitation as you slide the coupling on will transfer the heat from the coupling to the shaft. The result is that the shaft will expand, and the coupling may stick before you get it into position. If this happens, you will need to remove the coupling and start all over again. And make sure the shaft cools to normal temperature before you try again. After the coupling hubs are properly installed on the shafts, and the hubs and shafts have cooled, tighten the set screws on the keys. Install any other locking device that may be required. At this point, the two pieces of equipment to be connected by the coupling must be properly aligned. 
This procedure is covered in detail in another training module. After the shafts are aligned, the only remaining step is to bolt the coupling flanges together and tighten the bolts securely, making sure that no misalignment in the two shafts takes place. As with most couplings, the removal is considerably simpler than installation. In the case of the flange coupling, remove the bolts from the coupling halves. Once that is done, loosen or remove any locking devices, such as set screws, snap rings, and so forth. There are two basic methods of removing the coupling hubs from the shafts. The first method is to attach a suitable coupling puller and pull the coupling off. Be very careful not to damage the center in the shaft. The other method, used for interference fits, is to quickly heat the coupling half only, keeping the flame away from the shaft. This heating is done while pressure is applied on the coupling with a coupling puller. When the heat expands the coupling, it should slide off with the aid of the puller. After the couplings have been removed, clean up your work area and your tools. That's the basic installation and removal of the two types of rigid couplings, sleeve and flange. Needless to say, your couplings may vary somewhat, but the general procedure will remain much the same. If you have any questions, ask your instructor. We have some questions for you now. You'll find them in exercise number four of your workbook.